Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we are making this gorgeous ultimate crochet rose bouquet. You are gonna love this super simple step-by-step -step pattern. There's no need to make a row of single crochet. They are removable, washable, dust-free. You can just throw them in your washing machine and put them back together. You don't have to mess around with floral wire. These are actually using knitting needles to hold them up, so they have a great stem to them. And if you don't have knitting needles, just keep watching. I'll totally show you how to do it without knitting needles too. If you want to follow along with a written pattern, it's available over on my website, secretyarnery.com, and you don't have to worry about being able to read a pattern. All of my patterns are written in plain English, just like I was sitting there beside you. And I just realized something. These would be so great for a wedding bouquet. Are you serious right now? <gasps> How dreamy would that be? Look at that. To make this crochet bouquet of flowers, you'll need yarn. I'm using a whole heap of different shades of pinks and corals for mine, but you could use any colors that you want for yours. I'm using Saver from Ice Yarns and a five millimeter crochet hook. If you're using a different yarn, use a slightly smaller crochet hook size than you normally would with that yarn. So a bit of a smaller size than's recommended on the yarn label. You'll need a pair of scissors and a needle for sewing in your ends. I do recommend a sharp tip needle. I will link these in the description box down below, but you could also use whatever yarn needle you have on hand. You will also need some knitting needles. I suggest about a 3.5 millimeter knitting needle. These cheap wooden ones work great. If you can't find any or you don't have any, don't worry, just keep watching and I'll show you an awesome little hack to make these roses on a stem without knitting needles. So let's get started. To make the large crochet rows, we're gonna start by leaving a long tail, probably about 10 inches, and make a slip knot. We're gonna use this starting tail to sew our rows together later. So make a slip knot with a long tail. Shrink that down and pop it onto your hook, and chain 63. One, two, three, there is my chain 63. Now we're gonna work into the back loops and we wanna find the sixth back loop from our hook. So our back loops, if you roll those pretty Vs to the side, you'll see these camel bumps or these back loops. The first one is right underneath your working yarn. So there is one, two, three, four, five. We wanna work into the sixth back loop or the sixth camel bump right there. So wrap your yarn and into that sixth back loop or the sixth chain from your hook or make one double crochet. Just like that. So this counts as our first V stitch. So double crochet, chain two and double crochet. So wrap your yarn again and we're gonna go in to the third back loop. So we're gonna skip two, one and two. We're gonna work into this third back loop right there the third camel bump, and we're gonna do a V-stitch. So a V-stitch, one double crochet, chain two, and one double crochet into that same chain, that same back loop. If working into your back loops is difficult, you could work into the front of your chain as well. Nobody's gonna see it. Whatever is more, most comfortable for you. Wrap your yarn again, skip two, one and two, we're gonna work into the third. So we're gonna do this repeat all the way along the chain. So double crochet, chain two, and double crochet all into the same chain, that same stitch. So wrap your yarn, skip two, one, two, working into the third, we're gonna make a V-stitch. So double crochet, chain two, and double crochet. So slide that stitch on, that back loop, one double crochet, chain two, and one double crochet. 
So now you can pause the video and keep working along, skipping two chains and making a V-stitch, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, into the third chain, all the way down, and I'll meet you when we get to the end of our chain. At the end of your row, you'll have three chains left, but if you don't, don't worry about it. If you have one chain left, you're finished. Just forget about it. If you have two chains left, just skip one and go into the second. Ideally, you have three chains left, so you can skip two, and work into the third, but don't worry about it. It is a flower and every flower is unique. You won't be able to see if you've messed this up and you won't be able to tell if you did a different chain count when your flower is finished. So don't stress out, just finish up however it works out for you. So I'm gonna be doing my last V-stitch into this last chain here, which is right on top of my slip knot. So I'm just gonna slide that last back loop onto my hook and make my last V-stitch of one double crochet, chain two, and one double crochet. And that finishes row one. To start row two, chain three, one, two, three, and turn your work. Now we're gonna be working into these V spaces all the way down along our chain, just the space in that V. So into the first space, we're gonna do one double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet all into that space. There's one, and here's two. Into this next chain two space, the center of our V, we're gonna do two double crochets, one, and two, chain two, one, and two, and two more double crochets into that same chain space, one, and two. So it's kind of like a double V. Instead of doing a V and a chain two, we are doing two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. So into the next space, two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. So there's one, two, chain two, and two double crochets into that same chain space. One, and two. Into the next space, same thing, two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. So wrap your yarn, two double crochets, one, and two, chain two, and two more double crochets into that same chain space. One, and two. So now pause the video and keep working along, making these little houses, our little walls with a little roof, these little guys here. So make a little house into each of these spaces, each of these chain two spaces all the way around, and I will meet you at the end of your row. Have you subscribed to this channel? Go ahead and hit this button under this video right now so you don't miss out on any more fun stuff just like this. At the end of your row, we have this little loop at the end, that is a V-stitch. Doesn't look like it, but <laughs> that counts as a V-stitch. So into this last space at the end of our row, we're gonna do our last little house. So two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets to finish off this row. So there's two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. One, and two. So now we have a little house into each of these V spaces, our little double crochet, chain two, double crochet, all the way around. It's even starting to turn into a little circle if it's laying flat. And that finishes row two. To start row three, chain one, and turn your work. Now into the center of each of these little houses, that's where we're gonna be working this row. Just into that chain two space. So into the first chain two space, we're gonna do eight double crochets. So eight double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, if your double crochets are getting too big, you can just push them back to give yourself some more room. We want them all laying side by side, nice and tidy. Here is seven and eight. So there is our first petal. 
Now into the space in between the houses, one single crochet. So just into that space, one single crochet. And now into the front door of that next house, that center space, eight double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now into the space between the houses, one single crochet. Just like that. Into the center, that chain two space of the next house, eight double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And into the center between those houses, one single crochet. There we go. So now you can pause the video and keep working along, making eight double crochets into the center of that house and a single crochet in between the houses all the way along. And I'll meet you when we get to the end of the row. Get to the end of your row. At the end of our row, our last petal goes into our last house right there. Just like that. Now we're going to work into the top of this chain three to join. So just fold that little front loop back. We want two strands of that chain on the top of our hook. We're just going to go in and make a slip knot. Just like that. And chain one to secure your yarn. Cut your yarn. You can leave a bit of a long tail. We'll still be using this tail to sew in or sew together our flower and pull your hook up and that yarn through and snug that down to secure. To make the rosebud, we're going to start the same way. So leaving a long tail, about 10 inches, make a slip knot any which way you normally do. Shrink that down and pop it onto your hook. And for the small rosebud, we're just going to chain 30. One, two, three, 29, and 30. So there is my chain 30. We're going to start the exact same way. So wrap your yarn and work into the sixth back loop or the sixth chain from your hook. So our first back loop is right underneath our working yarn. So there is one, two, three, four, five. We're going to work in to our sixth chain. So into that sixth chain or the sixth back loop, just slide it onto your hook and make one double crochet. So that counts as our first V stitch. Wrap your yarn into the third chain. So one, two, into the third. We're going to make a V stitch. So V stitches are one double crochet, chain two, and one double crochet into the same stitch, that same chain, just like that. So you can pause the video, skip two, one and two, working into the third with a V-stitch. V-stitches, double crochet, chain two, and double crochet, just like we did for the big flower or the large rose. So double crochet, chain two, one double crochet, all into the same chain. So pause the video and keep working along, skipping two and making a V-stitch into the third, and I'll meet you when we get to the end of our chain. At the end of our chain, we'll have three chains left. We're going to be working into this last chain right here. If you have two chains left, just work into the second chain. And if you have one chain left, just stop right now. You don't have to do anything else. Don't worry about it. Don't worry if your stitch count is a little bit different. It is a rosebud and no one's really going to notice. So working into that very last chain, 
make a V-stitch of double crochet, chain two, and double crochet into that very last stitch, just like that. So that finishes round one. To start the next row, chain three, one, two, three, and turn your work. Now we're gonna be working into the center of our Vs, these chain spaces all the way along. So into the first chain space, one double crochet, chain two, and two double crochets into that same chain space. One, and two. Into the next chain space, we're gonna do a little house. So two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets all into that same space. So there's two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. One, and two just like that. So you can pause the video and keep working along. Two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets into each of these chain spaces all the way along our row, and I'll meet you when we get to the end. At the end of your row, we have this one little space left. That counts as a V-stitch. So into the center of that last little loop, we are gonna do our last little house. So two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets into this last space at the end of the row. There's two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. One, and two. To start the third row, chain one, and turn your work into this very first stitch, right here, right along our chain, right there. We're gonna do our first single crochet. So into that space, one single crochet. So now we're gonna work in to the center of our house, our little front door, and we're gonna do seven double crochets. So wrap your yarn and seven double crochets into that chain space. There's two, three, and seven. Now into the space between those houses, one single crochet and into the front door of your next house, seven double crochets. One, two, three, and seven. And into the space between the houses, one single crochet. So you can pause the video and keep working along. Seven double crochets into the center of the house and a single crochet in between houses all the way along. And I'll meet you when we get to the end of our row. At the end of our row, we're gonna do our last seven double crochets into this last house right here. So seven double crochets into your last house or that last chain two space. Just like that. Now into the top of our chain three, we wanna get two strands of that chain on the top of our hook. We're just gonna finish with a slip stitch and a chain one. Just like that. Cut your yarn, you can leave a bit of a long tail. We're still gonna use that for sewing, in it, sewing our rows together a little bit. And pull that up and snug that down to secure. Now go ahead and make as many rosebuds as you would like. To make the bottom for the large rose, or the rose bloom, I'm gonna start with a magic ring, but you could start with a chain three. What I like about a magic ring is it stays on the knitting needle or on your stick a lot easier. So to start a magic ring, just hold that tail over your non-dominant hand and just hold it down on your ring finger. Wrap it around your two fingers, making an X, and bring it around that third finger, just also holding it underneath your thumb on your ring finger. Turn your hand over, you'll have a short strand and a long strand. Grab your crochet hook, hook side facing down, and just slide it underneath the first loop and grab the long loop, bringing it under the short loop. Point your hook towards yourself. Relax your thumb a little bit so that yarn can slide. Turn your hook away from yourself, underneath that long strand, turning your hook, 
releasing. So now I'm just holding that yarn with my pinky. I'm gonna hold my ring here with my thumb and just bring that loop through the loop on my hook, just like that. So there is my magic ring. I will link a video up in the cards where I just show you how to do the magic ring itself. Chain one. And now we're gonna do 12 double crochets into the center of this ring. So just 12 double crochets. We wanna be working over our tail. So there's one, two, three. So you can pause the video and just work ahead. 12 double crochets. Our chain one does not count. So we need to actually make 12 double crochets. I'll meet you back when you have them done. So there are my 12 double crochets. You can just count. And remember, we don't count this chain here. We start counting right there. So that is one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and 12. So go ahead and pull that center tail to snug that ring closed. And just drop it, we'll, we'll sew that in later. Now we're gonna slip stitch the top of that first double crochet. That is right here. This stitch right on the side, that is our first double crochet. So we're gonna slip stitch two strands of that V on the top of your hook, slip stitch to join, and chain one. So that chain one doesn't count as anything. Now we're gonna work into that very same stitch right here and we're gonna make one double crochet. So one double crochet into the same stitch. And into the next stitch right here, we're gonna do two double crochets. So wrap your yarn and two double crochets. One and two into the next stitch right here, one double crochet. So one double crochet into the next stitch. Wrap your yarn and two double crochets into this stitch right here. So we're gonna alternate doing two double crochets and then one double crochet. So here's two into the next stitch, one double crochet and into the next stitch, two double crochets. So an increase every second stitch. So there's our two double crochets, one double crochet, and two double crochets into the next stitch. So you can pause the video and just keep working around this circle, just finishing that up, one double crochet into the next stitch and two double crochets into the stitch after that, and I'll meet you when we get back to where we started. So there, I have gotten back to where I started. I just did two double crochets into that last stitch. So now we're gonna slip stitch into the top of that first double crochet, which is right there, kind of down on the side. So slide your hook in, two strands of that stitch on the top of your hook, bring it back and slip stitch to join, and chain four. One, two, three, and four. Now we're gonna skip two stitches. So this does not count as our first stitch. That there is just part of our very first chain where we worked into. So we're gonna skip one and two. We're gonna go into the third stitch right here. So into the third stitch, one single crochet, chain four, one, two, three, four. And now we're gonna skip three one, two, three. We're gonna go in to the fourth. We're gonna go in right there. So into the fourth stitch, one single crochet. Chain four, one, two, three, and four. Skip three, one, two, three. Working into the fourth, one single crochet. Chain four, one, two, three, four, skip three, one, two, three, into the fourth, right there, one single crochet, and chain four. One, two, three, and four. So now back at the join, now we're gonna slip stitch into this first chain we made right there. We're gonna slip stitch to join. 
So into that first chain, we want two strands on the top of your hook. Slip stitch to join. To start your petal, wrap your yarn and into that space, one half double crochet. Into the same space, one double crochet. Wrap your yarn twice, treble crochet. All into the same space, we're building up our leaf. Just like that. Now we're going to do a pico. So chain three, one, two, three, and into the third chain, the third back loop, right here, we're going to slip stitch to form our pico or a little point on the end of our leaf. Our leaf. One treble crochet into the same space. We're going to work our way down now. So there's our treble crochet, our double crochet into the same space and a half double crochet. So that finishes our first leaf. To start our second leaf, we're going to slip stitch into that next space. So one little slip stitch. Wrap your yarn and one half double crochet into that space. One double crochet. One treble crochet. So wrap your yarn twice one pico, so chain three, one, two, three, and slip stitch into that first chain to form your pico. Wrap your yarn twice, one treble crochet, one double crochet, and one half double crochet. So now into each of our chain spaces around the edge, so with our next three spaces, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a leaf. So to start your leaf, slip stitch into that space to start, half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet, pico. So chain three and slip stitch to that first chain to form your pico. Treble crochet. One double crochet. And one half double crochet to finish. So you can pause the video and keep working around into your next two spaces, making one leaf into each and I'll meet you when we get back to where we started. When you get back to where you started, we're just going to slip stitch anywhere really over into this very first petal, somewhere down there at the bottom. So just pop your hook in and slip stitch and chain one to secure your yarn. Cut your yarn, leaving a long enough tail to sew in with a needle. Pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. And now sew in your tails. So for this magic ring, make sure it's nice and snug and just sew it in. This is the one that can come apart later if you made the magic ring. So you want to just make sure that this one is nice and secure. So I like to keep going in the same direction ahead a little bit. Like that, I'll go ahead twice and then I'll back up. I'll go the opposite direction. And these sharp tip needles really help. If you have a blunt tip needle, you want to sew it in a little bit more aggressively than I do, a little bit more stitching. But with a sharp tip needle, it is totally secure right now. Then just snip that one off and sew your other tail in as well. So this is the bottom for the large rows. Now to make the bottom for the small rows, We start the same way, making a magic ring, so holding it down on your ring finger with your thumb, wrapping around your two fingers making an X, bringing it around and holding it loosely underneath your ring finger again. So you have two strands, long and short, hook facing down under the short strand, grabbing or snagging the long strand, bringing it under and pointing your hook towards yourself, relaxing your thumb a little bit, now I'm holding it more with my pinky. Now slide your hook under that long strand, turn your hook, releasing your thumb, releasing the yarn, and pulling it through that loop to form your magic ring. 
chaining one and doing 12 double crochets into the center of this ring, taking care to go over your tail. So pause the video and get your 12 double crochets done and I'll meet you when you're finished. So there's my 12 double crochets. So just snug that ring closed and into the top of that first double crochet right there, we're gonna slip stitch to join. So slip stitch to join. Just like that. And chain two. One and two. Now we're gonna skip this little bit here. That's not really a stitch, but we're gonna skip it and we're gonna skip this next one here. So we're skipping the stitch. We're gonna work into the second stitch right there. So one single crochet, chain two, one, two, skip two. So we're skipping one and two, working into the third right there, one single crochet, chain two, skip two. So we're skipping one and two, working into the third one single crochet, chain two, skip two. So now we have just these three stitches left. So I'm gonna skip one stitch here. I'm gonna work into the second. We want five petals for our rows. So we're not really worried about the stitch count. We're worried about how many spaces we're making along the edge. Chain two, one and two. And now we're gonna slip stitch into this chain to join. We want two strands of that chain on the top of our hook. So into that chain, two strands on the top of your hook, slip stitch to join. Find that next space right there. Wrap your yarn and one half double crochet. One half double, one double crochet. and we're gonna do a pico. So chain three, one, two, three, and slip stitch into that first chain right there to form a pico. So just slide that back loop onto your hook and slip stitch. Wrap your yarn, one double crochet into the same space. Slide those stitches back if you need a bit more room and one half double crochet to finish that leaf one half double crochet. So that is our first leaf. To start our second leaf, find that next space and slip stitch. So we start with a slip stitch, one half double crochet, one double crochet, pico, so chain three and slip stitch into that first chain to join just slide it on your hook and slip stitch. One double crochet into the same space and one half double crochet to finish off that leaf. Find the next space and now we're gonna do this for all of our spaces around the edge. We have three more spaces to do. So a total of five petals. So into the next space, we slip stitch to start Wrap your yarn, one half double crochet. Wrap your yarn, one double crochet. Pico, so chain three, one, two, three, and slip stitch into that first chain to join. Wrap your yarn, one double crochet, and one half double crochet to finish. So that's our leaf. So we want to continue that. We want to do two more of those into our last two spaces. So you can pause the video and get these last two leaves done and I'll meet you when we get back to where we started. So there is my five leaves. Now we're going to slip stitch into that very first stitch to join. Just right over there. So pop your hook in and slip stitch. Chain one to secure your yarn. Cut your yarn, leaving a long enough tail to sew in with a needle later. Pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. Now again, because we did our magic ring, we want to snug that down. So now go ahead and sew in your tail just like we did for the larger one. Then you can just pop it so the pretty stitches are facing out 
And that is the little basket for our small roses, for our rosebuds. Now to form your roses, it's the same technique no matter which size of rose you are making. So I'll just start with the larger one. Find the end that doesn't have any tails, and we have this flat edge here. So this is our very first shell, and how I like to do it, there's two different ways. We can either roll it inside, so pretty stitches facing up, or you could roll it the other way, pretty stitches facing out. So I'll show you both different ways, or I'll show you what it looks like. So pretty stitches facing in, just take that first shell, fold it in half. We want to keep this edge straight along the bottom there, like that, and then just start rolling it. We want to keep this bottom edge, or our chain from the very beginning, all like touching or a little bit under the row before. We don't want to lose any of our stitches. So I just roll mine with my chain underneath a little bit the chain from the row before. You don't have to pull, you can just decide how you're doing it. You could unroll it and roll it again. So you can do it once without pulling and see how your petals line up. You can do it again with pulling, like stretching your chain to see how that lines up. And we just go around and around like that. You flip it over, that is what your rose looks like. So go ahead and thread your needle. A sharp tip needle really helps. These are linked in the description box down below. But if you have a blunt tip needle, that will also work. Sharp tip just really holds it a lot easier. So now going from side to side, we're just gonna go across our rows underneath. And we wanna go underneath all of those chains and all the way out the other side. just like that. And I'm gonna skip a few stitches now and I'm gonna go this way across. So we're just gonna go across and across and across, making sure we're picking up all of those chains as we go, all those layers of our petal or our flower, just like that. Now I'm gonna come across this way a little bit, all the way across, underneath your chain and back across all the way until we're really sure we've got it nice and snug. You don't have to pinch it too much. You can keep it that shape. And I wanna end up at the same spot over here. So I'm just gonna go back through and end up right where that petal starts or finishes, just like that. So that tail is finished. Now we can sew in our top tail. So looking from the top of your flower, just find where you want that petal to be. I try not to line them up exactly one behind the other. So maybe I'll pull this one a little bit so that it's off center. And then flipping it over, that's where I'm going to stitch it. All the way down to the bottom of that flower. So I'm just going to Stitch it like that. Without pulling, you don't need to make it too snug. And now I can tie these two tails together. So just with a regular double knot. Give it a good pull and one more knot. Just like that. Now. You can sew those tails in or just snip them off. Just make sure you've done a really secure knot. If you are not using acrylic yarn, you might want to sew in your tails because those knots can come undone. But you can really pull acrylic yarn nice and snug. So this is how the rose looks when we put the pretty side facing in. And if we roll it with the pretty stitches facing out or facing down, the other way, you get a different looking flower. So I'll just show you real quick what that looks like. So this is with pretty stitches facing in. This is with pretty stitches facing out. 
so you can see the difference of which way you want to roll your rows, but you get two different flowers. So I suggest doing a mix. Maybe I do most of them like this and some of them like that, just so your bouquet looks a little bit different. And now go ahead and do that with your rosebuds, starting with the end without a tail. Usually for my rosebuds, I do them pretty stitches facing in because rosebuds aren't that open yet. And just zoom it all up and sew in your tails. So here is your rosebud folded in, so pretty side of your stitches facing in. And here is your rosebud pretty side of your stitches facing out. So both of those are really cute. I do a mix of those also. So there are your roses. Now to assemble our roses, grab your knitting needle. So if you don't have knitting needles handy and you wanna get started on this right away, here is a fast and fun little cheat. Grab some little buttons if you have any laying around your house, just small little ones. You could also use little wooden beads or plastic beads, anything you can find. And also grab a pack of barbecue skewers. So these you can just grab by the hundred from your Dollar Tree or grocery store. And you wanna select some small little buttons that don't have any attachment on the back, just the kind that have the holes going all the way through. Just put a little dollop of glue on the back of that button and stick your barbecue skewer into it. Just hold it up straight while it dries. Just hold it down, pressing, can you see? Pressing firmly just so that the glue can dry. And there you have your own little knitting needle a cute little button on the end of a barbecue skewer. So these are so cheap to make and you can go crazy today. So I hope that helps you get started with your roses in a pinch. And you look down into the center of your rose. We wanna be looking right down into where it, that very first fold was, where we folded that first shell in half. We wanna poke our needle down and we wanna find a center spot where it comes out nice and snug on this side. So just slide that blossom onto your knitting needle. Give it a little pull. We wanna make sure it's not gonna come off. Now grab your small leaf and just pop this knitting needle into where that magic ring is. Nice and snug, that's why I like a magic ring. It holds up your flower nice and snugly. So slide this all the way up onto your rosebud and just give it a little massage so that those leaves form along the petals. So they just kind of line up. So there is our rosebud. And now we're gonna do the same for our larger bloom. So find the center down in the middle of that flower, right where we started, our first fold, and just poke your needle down. We wanna poke it out somewhere where it's snug. So you can kind of move it around after you find the center from this side. Find a snug spot on the other side. Pop your leaf on, nice and snugly, because of that magic ring. Pop that up, bring it all onto your Rose. Make sure we're not crushing any petals on that side with our rosebud or with our knitting needle. There we go. Nice and, nice and snug, it's not gonna fall off. And again, massage this leaf down. Just give it a little snug, a little cuddle. Push it into place. Just like that. So there are our two roses done. And then do that for all of your flowers and your if you have a leaf that doesn't stay up automatically on your skewer, like the magic ring ones do, there's two things you can do to fix that. First, you can do your chain three with a longer tail and then use that tail to cinch it shut so that it will stick onto your skewer and hold itself up. Another thing you can do are use little elastics. <laughs> These are for hair. These are little hair accessories. Or if you don't have those, you could just use the smallest elastic bands you can find. You can also use these elastics from Magic Loom Kits. They work great if you can find them in the color that matches your green or your stem. 
They also come in little packs, like per color. So to use those, just pop your loose leaf up, up onto your flower. Take two of your small elastics or one of your regular ones and just loop it around a couple times. You don't have to go too many times. You don't have to make it snug. You still want it to be a little bit loose. And then just roll that all the way up. underneath your flower and now it'll stay up just like your other ones. So I hope you love your crochet bouquet as much as I love mine. I'm waiting for you in that video right there and stay hooked!